spread the word about this important um, incident. Um, my name is Anthony Johnson, and I am your Central Ohio Crime Stoppers Coordinator. On April 29th at 10.58 p.m., officers were dispatched to the area of Indianola and Springs on the report of drag racing and a bunch of cars doing a street takeover. Um, officers arrived to that scene. Shortly after those officers arrived to that scene, they began to hear gunshots and then quickly realized that they were being shot at, and that is unacceptable. That is absolutely unacceptable. Shortly after that, I received a call from Sergeant Steele from the FOP Lodge 9, uh, to be specific, and he expressed the same concerns. And I think his exact words were, I don't want to just talk about it, I want to do something about it. So I'm pleased to announce um, that the FOP is putting up $5,000 as a reward through Crime Stoppers for anybody that has information that would result in the arrest and or indictment of these suspects. Um, in the video that you will see shortly, um, it is very clear that officers were being shot at, and we will not stand for that. So anybody who has information is encouraged to call Central Ohio Crime Stoppers, and we will give you the information on how to contact us shortly. Um, with that being said, I would like to introduce Sergeant Brian Steele from the FOP. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, big thanks to City Attorney Zach Klein's office. Thank you to our Council Member Safety Chair Remy, and thank you to Chief Ally for being here. Any differences or unresolved grievances we may have had between our organizations, I assure you, was set aside the moment our officers came under attack. I want to make something clear. These individuals are not street racers. These individuals are hostile street takeovers. That is exactly what they're doing. They're inflicting terror on our residents. My message to these individuals is simply turn yourself in, turn yourself in peacefully, turn yourself in right now. Our detectives are working around the clock. The reality is every patrol officer in this city is going to look at you, look for you. You attacked one of our officers. We will find you. A SWAT team will soon be at your door. We will rip the front of that off of your house, and we will bring you into justice. I guarantee you, you cannot hide in this city. Thank you. Now, Deputy Chief Ally. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Um, on behalf of the Division of Police, I would like to say a thanks to the FOP and to Crime Stoppers for putting this reward together. Uh, the Division is very concerned regarding incidents like this street takeover. Uh, what you're seeing here is still shots of vehicles of interest and persons of interest uh, that were involved in this incident. So you can't imagine the extreme level of stress that this creates for the officers who put their lives on the line and respond to incidents like this to bring order to the chaos. Our officers constantly run towards the gunfire when there are other people running away from gunfire because it's their job to keep our city safe and to protect the residents and businesses of our city. This was a life-threatening situation, make no mistake about it. This was a situation that was completely preventable. This was a situation that was completely out of control. And situations like this have to come to a stop. Just like President Steele said, firing at police officers is unacceptable. It won't be tolerated. We will catch you, we will arrest you, and you will be prosecuted. Uh, our officers showed a great level of restraint by not returning fire. There was crowds involved. There was a lot going on in this instance. And our officers kept their composure and kept their professionalism. Uh, each of us police officers knows that when we, before we start our shift, when we put on our uniform, and when we go out there to serve the public, there is a chance that we won't come home this evening. Our officers go to work anyway. They do their jobs, and they do them to the best of their ability. So regarding this incident, uh, we're going to show you some clips so that you can get a feel of what happened. And what we're asking from the public is if you recognize any of the people involved, if you recognize any of the vehicles involved, we need you to contact Crime Stoppers. We need you to send those tips in, send that information in. We need you to send in any pictures you have, any video clips, anything that you can help solve these crimes and bring the people who did wrong to justice. So this time, uh, we'll show you the clip. Okay, 
So a couple things I wanted to point out here, what you just saw. You could hear multiple rounds of gunfire being fired at our officers. You can see our officers rushing to the scene to try to bring order to this chaos. And let me make it completely clear. This isn't street racing. This is a street takeover. This is people doing things that are extremely dangerous to themselves, to the people around them, and to the public. So we have to bring a stop to this. So. We're asking for your help at this point. We're asking for you to send in whatever tips, whatever information that you have, and we're asking for your help at bringing these people to justice. Now, we recognize all the people at the scene aren't involved in the incident, but we also recognize that the people at the scene have information. They saw something. We saw specifically that there was a person with a rifle standing on top of a vehicle firing that rifle at some point. So we need your help. We need you to send that information in, and we need you to send it in to us so we can bring these people to justice, make the community safer for everyone. We appreciate your help. Thank you so much for your time. And at this point, I'd like to introduce Council Member Emmanuel Remy. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to Sergeant Steele and our partners at Crime Stoppers. As Council Chair of Public Safety, City Council Chair, I'm proud of this collaboration with Crime Stoppers, the FOP, and the division. As a city, you guys know we are committed to preventing crime, but when the time for prevention has passed and crime has been committed, we must work swiftly as a community to find the culprits. Drag racing and gun violence are not welcome in Columbus. It puts our neighbors, our children and our first responders in danger. Our residents and neighbors deserve to feel safe in our city. Public safety is a shared responsibility that requires a proactive and collaborative approach. By emphasizing prevention, preparedness, reporting, and community engagement, we can build a safer and more secure neighborhood for everyone. I, along with my colleagues, continue to work on legislation to make our city a safer place. But as said earlier, if you know anything or have any insight that can help investigators, please call the Central Ohio Crime Stoppers to report this knowledge. You could help prevent a future deadly situation from happening, and you can remain completely anonymous. Thank you for your time, and God bless.
Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm Napoleon Bell, and I'm the president of Central Ohio Crime Stoppers. And just looking at that video is brings a lot of stress, and you can see how tense those uh, those officers um, were under at that time. Also, we don't we also don't think about you know they were being shot at, but also what's behind them, houses, family members, and so not only were officers under fire, but the community was under fire. So I'm thankful to the, our collaboration with uh, Columbus Division of Police and the council members and also the FOP for, for putting forth this $5,000 as reward to information that will lead to the arrest and or indictment of the person or persons responsible for these shots being fired. Now, we talk about that this is anonymous. When you call Central Ohio Crime Stoppers or use the P3 Tips mobile app or go to our website, it is totally anonymous. We do not know who called who wrote in, all we have is a tip number. From that, if your tip leads to an arrest or indictment, that $5,000 is yours. So we want to make that very clear, that somebody saw something there, and we're asking them to call in and to identify the, that person or persons that were doing that gun, shooting those guns at the police officers, and you will receive $5,000 for doing that. So hopefully that you'll do that. Um, if you know anything, we say if you, if you know something, say something, say it here anonymously. Call us on our tip line at 614-461-8477. Our website is stopcrime.org. We also have the P3 Tips mobile app. And uh, as again, it is anonymous. So please call in to help bring these persons who were shooting at police officers and everyone behind them to justice. Thank you. AJ? At this point, we'll take any questions. Brock, do you have any idea how many people, did you mind? Sorry. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Um, do you have any idea how many people were actually shooting at the scene? Because it's hard to tell, even from the different videos we've been sent into our newsroom, yeah. how many people were shooting and how many people were actually in that crowd? In terms of numbers, we can tell you that it was upward toward 100 cars that were there. Uh, it was possibly multiple hundreds of people that were there amongst the people actually taking part in the event and the spectators. Uh, and as far as we can tell, there are multiple people who were involved in actually firing the shots. We do have persons of interest that we can't share at this time because it's an ongoing investigation. But uh, there are multiple people, we believe, were involved in firing at our police officers. Have there been any arrests out of this situation so far? Not at this time. But once again, it's an ongoing investigation. And arrests are forthcoming. Charges could those people be facing? They could be facing felonious assault charges, attempted murder charges, assault on a police officer, amongst other felonious charges. Any idea how many shell casings were recovered at the scene? How many shots were actually fired? Yeah, I, I don't have the exact number of shots, and regarding the number of shell casings, that's going to be tied to the evidence. So we're not going to release that amount of information right now, but uh, multiple shell casings of different calibers dealing with a lot of situations like this, like in abandoned parking lots like Eastland Mall, other other areas around the city. I mean, this was in an intersection, but Absolutely. In other areas too. Yes. And let me just say that this particular incident involved uh, Columbus police officers of four precinct, three precinct. And you'll hear in the video that there was a citywide 10-3 put out at one point, 10-3 meaning officer in trouble. So we're not just talking about officers in the immediate area that needed to respond. We're talking about officers citywide and anyone who can hear that message on the radio or being asked to respond. So not only that, OSU PD was involved in this, uh, campus walkie crew and other uh, units within the Columbus D Division of Police were involved in this incident. And this incident is part of an ongoing number of crimes and street takeovers similar to this, which is the reason why we have different units, different officers, and different levels of investigations regarding these, this ongoing problem. And I assume they're harder to, to stop and control because you're really put in danger, these officers, if you just approach a situation like this. Like, how do you stop this from happening? Can cops just, like, run up? I mean, you don't want to just run up on yeah. a scene like that. Right. Well, our officers are going to rush towards the danger because they're, they want to make sure that they're saving the people in the community. So um, you're right. You can't just run in without a plan. But once our officers get there, they respond, they take action, they do what needs to be done. And that changes, and that's different, uh, depending on what the situation is. So um, 
Our officers do a really good job of breaking things down, finding out who are persons of interest, finding out who are pe which people are suspects, and finding out which people are innocent bystanders, figuring out what the people's roles are, and then dealing with those people appropriately. But you're right. I mean, this is an ongoing issue, and this is something that's happening all over our city, and we have to put a stop to it. So this is the reason why we have so many men and women working very diligently to end situations like this. Your officers respond to a situation like this. Like, had there not been gunfire, there's obviously different rules of engagement now than there may have been a few years ago when there's a large crowd in the middle of the street. Absolutely, they're not doing anything except yeah. being in the street. Yeah. What action could have been taken had there not been the shots fired? Well, here's the thing: we, as the Columbus Division of Police, uh, encourage nonviolent. Protest, nonviolent expression. We encourage people to use their First Amendment rights. And there is a big difference from someone expressing their opinions, expressing their First Amendment rights in a nonviolent manner compared to someone who is endangering the people around them, like with the street takeover, like with firing guns in the public, like with firing guns at police officers. And just like what was mentioned, those bullets go somewhere. Something is going to stop those bullets or someone is going to stop those bullets. So people are going to be harmed by this. So this is a big difference. It changes our response. And we step up our response when there are lives in danger. And that's what we're talking about here. This is a life-threatening situation. And our officers act accordingly. In this video that we just watched, obviously this is before the officers engaged. From an officer's standpoint, obviously everybody's different, mm -hmm. but are you able to tell us what's going through the officer's mind as they're preparing to approach or as they're preparing to do this plan that they've rehearsed? Absolutely. And you can tell that there's a plan in mind because what the officers are doing, they're staging their cruisers on Indianola Avenue where this incident took place. But they're doing it from a distance because what they're doing is they're protecting the public. They're shutting down the traffic around this incident so that general members of the public, innocent bystanders, don't get caught up into the situation. So that's how they started to approach this because that's the safest way, not only for the public, but also for the officers so that they can get uh, any innocent bystanders a distance away from what's going on and so that they can make a safe approach together. So uh, once they began shutting down the street, then that's when you saw and heard those shots ring out. And then that's when the officers, like you saw, they have to take cover, they have to prepare themselves for people to be hurt and also uh, to defend those people and to defend themselves. So that's what you're looking at there. You're looking at officers who are highly trained and who are experienced and who have to deal with an ongoing exigent circumstance. In addition the shots being fired at the officers, there are apartment buildings that line that street. There were people out watching. They heard the gunfire. They were checking out to see what was going on. This could have been a drastically different situation. Absolutely. There could have been people killed in this situation, which is one of the reasons why the officers staged where they were, because you are surrounded by residential areas, apartment complexes, people's homes. So the officers have to clear out as much area as they can so that those people aren't affected or hurt by the things going on by the people who are committing violent acts of aggression. And you just said there were hundreds of people there. Yes. Obviously, at least one of those hundreds has to have an idea of what's going on. We've talked about how this is anonymous, but what is your best pitch speaking to those hundreds of people that were there to come forward and say something? I exactly what you just said. If you saw something, if you were there, you saw something. So if you saw something, say something. So we're asking for help. The Division of Police needs the help from the public. And this is what we're asking for. So if you were there and you saw something, this is your chance to be anonymous. This is your chance to help with an investigation. And this is your chance to put a stop to violent acts of aggression and people possibly being hurt or killed out of something like this. So that's what I'm asking from anyone who was there at the situation, at the, at the incident. Anyone who has information, maybe they received information from somewhere else, maybe they were an eyewitness. We need them to contact Central Ohio Crime Stoppers. We need them to give them that information so that they can share that information with our investigators and we can put a stop to this kind of thing. What about those who are fearful of somebody coming back and retaliating for saying something? What do you have to say to them? Well, the beauty of Crime Stoppers is that it's anonymous, just like what was stated. They can give information, they can give tips, and they can remain anonymous. They can even 
claim the reward. I don't, and I don't want to speak on Crime Stoppers' behalf, right. but they can claim the reward anonymously. So they don't have to give their personal information or be fearful of retaliation, but they can help with the investigation. So it's a win-win situation. If they call in, give that information, give those tips, they might be able to earn themselves a reward. The body camera you showed us stopped yes. before we see officers get in contact with these people. How did, um, from what you've seen, um, how did officers de-escalate that situation in this particular incident? Yeah, there were, so there were a lot of officers at the scene and the video that we showed you was just a selection of some of the video that we captured from the BWCs. Unfortunately, we can't show you everything because once again, it's an ongoing situation. But um, our officers responded in force so that they could start to break up these crowds, start to separate the vehicles and separate people out in order to stop this kind of thing. So slowly and methodically is the way that they did it, but uh, they do it as safely as they can, both for the officers involved and for the public around. Was there anyone who was questioned on the scene following them de-escalating the situation? Yeah, our patrol officers always conduct preliminary investigations whenever they're on the scene. So yeah, there are always questions asked, and then the investigators come in, the detectives and the people who do follow-ups. They ask deeper questions, more involved questions, that kind of thing. Brian, can I ask, it, it seems like there have been more instances of officers being shot at in the last few months. Is that the case, or are we just hearing about it more? And is that kind of your reasoning for putting up this reward? Yeah, we were talking about it before. I believe this is the fourth incident in the last couple months where our officers were directly shot at. Over Hamilton Road, the officers were shot at. They were shot at at the substation. One of the officers' vehicles was shot, and our officers at Short North took gunfire the other night. So it's becoming more and more con concerning. A criminal needs to know, you fire a shot at the police, we will dump every resource into getting you and bringing you to justice. One last question. Uh, just given it's summer's coming up, obviously, more people out during the summer, nicer weather. Are there any concerns that we might see more of this or just more violence in general as we're heading into the summer months? This is absolutely a concern. Yeah, this is the reason why we have officers working so diligently. We have patrol officers working out here every day, 24 hours a day. We have investigators working cases, looking up on, uh, checking up on people of interest, suspects. Uh, we have officers who work the different intelligence units who are looking at patterns of crime and where this is happening and why it's happening so often. So yes, we are stepping up our efforts because the weather's getting warmer and nicer and because if this continues to happen, we need to catch the people involved and we need to put a stop to this for the safety of the public. Thank you all for being here.